Okay, let's watch something. Oh my god, these days it's really hard to find a good channel. What was the name of the channel that my friends were suggesting? Uh huh, take FM. Alright, let's go for it. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you later. Alright, guys, you're done here, right? Awesome, awesome, yeah. What's going on? Is it over already? Alright guys, one of the audience just saw me, so I'm going to stick around for a little bit more and I will catch you later. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you later, yeah. What are you eating? Alright man, if I'm going to stay here and talk to you, so just have to give me some of your chips. Huh? Oh yeah, why not here? Thank you very much. Mm. Is it the kettle chips? What kind of flavor is that? Salt and vinegar, huh? It's really good, thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Mears. I'm a lead data scientist at a top company in the United States. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to provide a short intro to who I am since you might be wondering who this guy is. I also want to share some recommendations that I have for becoming a more successful programmer, even if you're just getting started on your programming journey. So, what are you waiting for? Let's get it started right now. So, like I said, I'm Mears. To introduce myself, I'm going to share six approaches I took to learn programming. Number one, learn through projects rather than just learning the language itself. Number two, enroll in a bootcamp or practical programming course. Number three, do not give up and set a target for applying to the jobs. Number four, don't worry too much about other people's opinion. Number five, take breaks when working on a project and when debugging. Number six, do not compare languages and frameworks all the time. Let's jump to number one. Learn through projects rather than just learning the language itself. Do simple projects rather than just learning the theory about the language. When I was at the school, I started learning C Sharp by writing the syntaxes on the paper to memorize it and was trying to solve interview problems with writing the solutions on the paper because I read in a book that writing code on a paper will help you better at coding since you won't be able to search the result on Google or Internet right away and makes you try harder to solve questions. Don't do this. Just memorizing the syntaxes and learning the for and if statement is not the way to learn programming. You need to start simple projects and through solving all the small problems and building the blocks of codes, you will establish a very good understanding and how the whole concept of programming works. I challenged myself with creating super simple websites. After a couple of months, started posting on websites that will do your simple websites even for free. And I told my friends, if you see anyone who was looking for a website, I'm available to help. I remember I got a contract to create a simple project management internal website for an aviation company that PMOs could enter and track their items for their sprints such as backlogs and other project management concepts. The company was an aviation maintenance service provider and it was a very simple website. It took me a while to finish the project, lots of back and forth until I provided a solid application. I did some other small projects so I could build my resume. Number two, enroll in a bootcamp or practical programming course rather than just relying on the courses that you're taking at the university. There are many useful courses nowadays on YouTube and many other online websites like Udemy. In 2007 or 8, there were not so many websites that were offering practical and useful courses like nowadays. By practical courses, I mean the courses that are teaching you how to finish a project step by step and do real world projects rather than just data structure and the theory about programming. You need to do something real. You need to work on the projects that people are willing to pay money for. Back then my favorite series of books were O'Reilly programming books like Head First C Sharp and so many other series that they had. The point is that you just need to be an active learner. There are many good programming blogs that are providing useful information. For example, for data scientists, Kaggle and Katie Nuggets are very good websites for staying up to date. Also, never be shy for asking questions. 
there are many other studies that you can post your program issue, like Stack Overflow. I think being a self-taught programmer is more effective in the market than being an academic person who has studied so many years, wrote many papers, but doesn't know what the market demand is and what researchers and projects are going to be profitable for the companies. First of all, I'm not against computer science degrees. I have a bachelor's and master's degree in computer science. And last year, I started my MBA in information system management at a good university. Definitely, my degrees helped me to get interviews as lead software engineer, tech lead, and other positions. In fact, I didn't become the lead data scientist in one night. And I've worked in the tech positions for more than eight years until I got to this position that I am right now. Now, however, I believe the combination of academia and market experience will help you a lot. Academia will significantly help you in getting the interviews, especially because of the first impression. And then, after getting the interview, it's your knowledge that will land you the dream job. As they say, academia will give you a stable job with reasonable income. But being a self-taught will provide you a fortune. The story is I got my bachelor's in computer science from a good university. In parallel, I was working as a software engineer. But mostly, I learned my coding from the market. Projects that I tried to accomplish, not the courses that I took in the university. But anyways, I thought a master's degree in computer science is going to change everything. And I will learn skills that are going to be in demand for the market. Usually this is not happening because universities are not offering that many practical and applied courses. I'm not saying this is the course always, but most of the time it is. Next, do not give up and set a target for applying to the jobs. It happened a lot that I got frustrated through developing an application when faced very difficult problems. And this came to my mind that function well, these functional methods, and you want an object to call it later. Seriously, what of this concept of programming, data structure, everything about programming is so difficult. Hmm. Maybe I should just become a lawyer. But I knew that like everything else, when you want to be successful, you need to be consistent. Keep going forward, don't rush yourself, and be consistent. That's the key. You need to keep learning and be positive. Be committed to the time that you're specifying for your learning and set a goal. For example, I had a goal to code four to eight hours per day. And after six months, evaluate myself. Remember to set a goal and commit yourself to that goal. Next item, don't worry too much about other people's opinion. After a couple of months, if you're showing your code to another programmers, especially the ones that are really good at programming, but at the same time, they're very negative. They might tell you, yeah, 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 sure, man, why not? Did you commit your changes? Yeah, I will take a look. All right, let me update the project and get what you have done. Let's see. All right, this doesn't have any structure. No coding conventions at all. So what's going on in this? It's a, literally, this is a spaghetti code. Oh my God, what were you thinking when you were writing this? Oh God, you don't have what it takes to become a programmer. The first part about your code is being poorly written might be true because you are new to coding and not having enough experience under your belt. But the second part that you're not going to become a programmer, that is not true at all. Do not listen to this type of people at all. Listening to this type of people will just make you to give up. And that is not what you want. I faced this type of people and first I got really frustrated and I thought maybe they're right and I'm not that good at programming and I never will be. Thank God I realized that I have to keep improving myself. And I realized if I listen to what these negative people are saying, then I won't become a programmer at all. Stay positive and keep learning by doing projects. Good programmers didn't born good programmers. They practiced and practiced. And that was a secret. Next item. Take breaks when working on a project and when debugging. When debugging, it's easy to go down the rabbit hole and spend multiple hours to fix a single problem. And there is no guarantee that you will fix the problem in one sitting. To avoid this, 
it's better to stop working and take a break and come back to it with a fresh mind. Of course, it happened a lot that I was staying up late and I was trying to finish a project, but after nine hours not stop working, your brain will get tired and solving a problem that might actually take you 10 minutes will take you one hour to solve. Therefore, work rationally. Stepping away from work for a few hours and returning to it with a fresh mind is very helpful. Not only is this a guaranteed way to help solve the problem, but you will also save yourself hours of headache. In the meantime, the project and the problems won't go away, and you will at least restore some needed sanity to improve the productivity. I promise. Hmm. All right, I mean, the first one is just really easy, obvious. All right. All right. This part. Defining this function, what? Whatever user is putting in. Calculator, like, like what? Like two plus two? I mean, that's obviously, it's five. Is it? Is it two plus two? Twelve hours gonna stop working? Damn it! Simple problems are becoming difficult ones. I'm out of here. Next, do not compare languages and the frameworks all the time. Don't say Python is better than R, and do not jump from one language to another language before establishing a good understanding of the programming concept. And instead of wasting your time by saying Oracle is better than Microsoft or Java is better than C Sharp. Just stick to one language and go forward. If you want to become a data scientist, then your language is Python and R. I prefer Python, by the way, but you might prefer R. And it doesn't mean that you're better than me or I'm better than you. Eight years ago when I started programming, I was comparing languages and frameworks all the time. But I chose to stick to C Sharp and I continued to learn until I landed my first job. When I got enough experience under my belt, I started applying for jobs and I went to so many interviews and so many of them were really technical. But eventually, I got a part-time job as a software engineer that I could work there and finish my bachelor's at the same time. In this channel, I will be talking and going through some tutorials regarding programming and data science. We'll talk about success and motivation and more. Anyways, if you like this video, you know what to do. Subscribe to my channel so you will be notified when I upload a new video. Until then, take care.